Hi my scholars, you are welcome back to my school channel and my name is Abiola. Do not forget in this channel we are solving the Champs CBT past question for the subject physics the year 2014. Remember, don't go anywhere, stay with us and we will be right back. school channel in this video segment we are solving questions 15 to 28 so join me as we begin with question 15 the small droplets of water that form on the grass in the early hours of the morning is what that is your dew okay you can also refer to it as the you can refer to it as a dew point you know that has um, a very close concept to where we have a dew then when you talk about because it's very important the dew point is very important to explain um, these terms that we have here okay so this is definitely due the small droplets of what i will see on um, grasses early early in the morning that is your due when you talk about mist you are talking about a collection of suspended uh, water droplets all right around um, dust particles that also entails around dew points so when you have um, a severe misty um, condition that is where we have fog okay so the correct option here is option d for dew 16. What is the equivalent of 20 Kelvin in Celsius scale? So we just have to use the concept of um, Kelvin scale, okay? So remember that to tap out your answer, your temperature unit in Kelvin, you just say Kelvin equals whatever thing you are having in degrees Celsius, right? Plus 273. So this time around, we are moving from Kelvin to Celsius scale. What do we have to do? By giving Kelvin as 20, right? So, which is, isn't it, plus 273. What do we do to make Celsius the subject of the formula? We move this to the left-hand side, then it becomes negative, all right? So that will be 20 minus 273, right? So 20 minus 273, that is minus 253, all right? So, so we can say that 20 Kelvin, 20 Kelvin equals minus 253 degrees Celsius. So we just have to go back to the screen and see if we have minus 253 in the options provided. And that should point us to the correct option. So look through the options provided and you'll find the correct option in option A. So option A is very correct. Question 17. The equation p raised to power a v raised to power b t raised to power c equals constant okay can be reduced or reduces to child's law if what happens so we are just going to sort out the values of a which are the powers the values of a b and c okay so we have this p v and t so what would be the value of a B and C that will reduce this to Charles law. Remember that Charles law. Okay, we are talking about V1 over T1 because V2 over T2, isn't it? So that means whatever thing we are going to be having, this should be eliminated, right? Then what we should have left is V over T. Okay, so that means this will be raised to power zero. P raised to the power 0, okay, anything raised to the power 0 is 1, so it's 1 multiplies all of this, okay, then we have V raised to the power 1, right, that is still V, then to be times T raised to the power minus 1, T raised to the power minus 1 still means 1 over T, okay, so this in turn, P raised to the power 0, that is 1, that is 1 times V times 1 over T, 1 times V, that is V, V times 1, that is V, over t so we can say a is zero b is my b is one right and c is minus one so we have zero one minus one so join me as we go back to the screen and see if we can find these values in their correct order so we have zero one minus one so where do we have that zero one minus one that is option d so option d is your correct option Number 18, the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of a body by 1 Kelvin is the body's what? That is the body's 
thermal or heat capacity. Okay, when you talk about specific heat capacity, we're talking about a unit mass. All right, so when you talk about latent heat or fusion, you're talking about that quantity of heat you need, all right, to change that state from solid to liquid, okay, without um, changing temperature, all right. So the correct option here is option A for heat capacity. Question 19. The melting point of a substance is equivalent to its what? Okay, it's equivalent to its freezing point. Okay, you know, um, this, this um, temperature we are talking about, above it you are talking about a liquid, below it we are talking about a solid. Okay, so this is telling you about freezing point. So, that is also pointing to solidification temperature. Okay, when something freezes, it becomes solid. For instance, your water, when it freezes, at least it becomes a solid height to be precise. So the melting point of a substance is equivalent to its what? To its freezing point or solidification temperature. So option B is very correct. Do not forget to get these my school tools. They are very helpful and resourceful in helping you planning for your coming exam. So all you need to do, use that link in the description below. Once you click it, it's going to take you to the MySchool website. Right there on the website, you have access to where you can download the MySchool mobile app for your Android devices or the MySchool software for your laptop. So remember, we still have different packages made available for you. So all you need to do, click on that link. All right, so join me as we solve question 20. The temperature at which the water vapor present in the air is just sufficient to saturate the air is what? Okay, that is the definition that fits and that describes dew point. Okay, so it is very salient and we strongly recommend that our users, my schoolers, that they become uh, familiar with definitions, terms and concepts um, that may arise in their exams. So, once you know the definition for this concept that we have here or for these terms that we have here you can correctly and confidently tell that the correct option here is option d for dew point please do not forget to hit that like button also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alerts as soon as we upload the next video clip question 21 it's transferred by convention in a liquid is due to what? Okay, this is actually um, due to what we call conventional currents. Okay, so this happens when, um, you know, the, the part of the liquid that is at the bottom close to the heat source. Okay, so where it is applied, that part becomes um, lighter. Okay, because it receives um, kinetic energy in the form of heat energy. So those heated molecules close to the heat source, they become lighter, their volume increases, but their mass remains the same. So remember, density equals mass over volume. So mass did not change, but volume increased. So you definitely the density will reduce. So these heated particles will have lesser density. So they will move up Why those ones that are colder above them will move down. They will sink down. They are going to receive kinetic energy in form of heat energy again. The same thing, that's how the circle goes on and on. So basically, based on the options provided, the most viable one would be due to the expansion of the liquid as it is heated, starting from the bottom, then it moves on like that. Remember, convention correct. So the correct option here is option D for the expansion of the liquid as it is heated. Question 22. The distance between two successive crests of a wave is 15 centimeters and the velocity 300 meters per second. Okay, calculate the frequency. So I remember that V equals F lambda. V is for velocity, F frequency lambda is for the wavelength. So if we have V equals F lambda, all right, so this implies that F will be equals to V over lambda right so we have f equals v is 300 all right we are given lambda as um 15 centimeter we have to convert to meters so that's 0.15 meters okay this means you know we are operating it as a calculator this means 300 over 1 divided by 15 over 100 right so this thing is 300 over 1 times 100 over 15 right so 15 year one 15 year that is 20. okay so 20 times this this gives you 2000 2000 hertz so if you want to convert this to um, standard form that can be two times 2.0 times 10 raised to power 
three hours. So let's go back to the screen and see if we can find such value in any of the options provided. So look through the options provided and you'll find that in option C. So option C is the correct option. 23. A boy receives the echo of his clap reflected by a nearby eel is 0.8 seconds later. Okay, how far is E from the eel? So remember that uh, when you talk about the velocity of sound in air equals 2x over t. Basically, I'm talking about echo. So we are having echo here. So that's V equals 2x over t. So take note of this. It is very, very important. Um, sometimes we can be proposed the value of V as 330. All right. Or sometimes you can have some questions giving you this or this. Okay. 330 or 340. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with these two values. Remember, the formula still remains this. Okay, so that means we are looking for distance represented by x here. So that will be v times t equals 2x. x will be, right, so that means x equals vt over 2. All right, so um, I'm putting all here so that we can use the two values that we have. So when we have v as 330, all right, times t, which is 0 0.8 over 2. Okay, 2 year 1, 2 year 0 0.4. If you multiply this by 0 0.4, you should have 132 meters distance. Okay, when I'm using um, 340 times 0 0.8 over 2, I can use 2 to divide this or divide this. I have 170. 170 times this, I should have 136 meters. So we just have to um, work with these values, okay? So either we have 132 or 136. So let's just go back to the screen and sort out this um, challenge posed to us. It's a very positive and nice one. So if you look through the options provided, we don't have 132, but we have 136. So 136 is the most viable option. So option C is your correct option. Question 24. An object is placed 10 meters from a pin -no camera of length 25 centimeters. Calculate the linear magnification, you know. We talk about magnification, you are actually um, putting image over object, either length, height, or distance, okay? Um, height or distance, just to put it properly. So, um, magnification will be, remember, we are told that from the question, okay, from a pin -no camera of length 25 centimeters, so that is 0. Point from um, centimeter to meter, so it will be 0 0.25. 25 in centimeters, 0 0.25 in meters over the object distance, okay? An object is placed 10 centimeters from a pin low camera, so this is what we have. Remember, image over object, okay? So 0 0.25 divided by 10, that should give you 0 0.025, okay? To standard form, you can have 1, 2, that is 2.5 times 10 raised to power minus 2. So let's go back to the screen and see if we have 0 0.025 or 2.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. So which of the options do we have this value? That is option B. So option B is your correct option. We understand that you may need clarity in some of the questions or topics we have treated so far. You need to do use that link in the description below. It's going to take you to the my school website so where you meet with our solution providers. Okay, so why not ask those questions right now? So join me as we solve question 25. The focal length of a concave mirror is 2.0 cm. If an object is placed 8.0 cm from it, the image is at what? Okay, so you can see that the unit we have here is in meters, while we are giving our unit in centimeters. So let's just walk around that. Using the mirror equation, remember, we have 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 1 over f. So we are looking for v, which is the image. So we are making this the subject of the formula. So we'll be having 1 over v equals 1 over f minus 1 over u. Okay, so this is 1 over v equals, all right, 1 over f, which is um, our f is given, focal length is given as 2, u is given as 8 minus 1 over 8. Okay, so LCM is 8. This is 2 in this, this is 4, 4 times 1, we have 4 minus 8 in 8, that is 1, 1 times 1, that is 1. So basically we have 1 over V equals 4 minus 1, 3 over 8. When we do this, we have 8 
equals v times 3 or v equals 8 over 3. Okay, so that should give us 2.6666 um, six, 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 thereabouts. So roughly 2.7. All right, so this is 2.7. So let's go back to the screen and see if we have such value provided. So 2.7. So I strongly believe that um, this presentation, this unit should have been provided in centimeters since we don't have a further breakdown. Okay, so if we are moving from centimeter to meters, it should be um, divided by uh, 100, of course. So this is definitely... Um, going to be centimeter. So just let's ignore this unit for now and focus on the value. So the correct value here is 2.7. So the correct option is option A. You may have better steps or explanations to any of the questions we have tackled so far. Please, we are so much interested. All you need to do, use that comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanations or solutions you like to share. 26. In a compound microscope, the objective and the high piece focal length are what? They are actually short. When you talk about a compound microscope, okay, it produces higher magnification compared to a simple microscope and it comprises of two convex lenses, okay? So, um, all of these, uh, the objective lens is the one closer to the object and this is the one through which you see the image formed, okay? So, um, when, you, when you look at these two, they are lenses, okay? They have short focal length. But when you try to compare them, comparing this to this, this has, um, you know, comparatively, this is larger than this in terms of their focal length. But being put together, okay, they have short focal length. So, the correct option here is option C for short focal length. Number 27. When a telescope is in normal use, the final image is at what? It is actually at infinity, okay? This kind of um, arrangement, okay? It's referred to as normal adjustment, okay, or normal use. You know, in an astronomical um, telescope, you have two, you know, comprises of two converging lenses. You have the eyepiece and we have the objective, okay? Uh, we should know that the objective is longer, longer uh, focal length compared to the eyepiece. And yeah, the eyepiece um, acts like the magnifying glass. So basically all they are requiring or, or, or what the question asks of us is that uh, the final image in a normal adjustment or normal use is at what? Infinity. So the correct option is option A for infinity. Question 28. When a negatively charged rod is brought near the cap of a charged gold leaf electroscope, which has a positive charges, okay, the leaf would do what? Okay, what you just notice here is there is divergence, all right? So if um, a negatively charged rod is brought towards a positively charged gold leaf, okay, what you will notice is that divergence will decrease. The same thing happened in the reverser case, okay? So even when a positively charged rod is brought near a negatively charged gold leaf electroscope, okay, you still see that divergence decreases. So what we have here as the correct option is option D, there is divergence. We have reached the end of this video segment, but there are more video clips to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button, also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as soon as we upload the next video clips.